Well, good morning or good afternoon, whenever it, it depends on when you kids are watching this. But uh, first of all, I want you to know that I do miss you, miss you all. Um, this is a very trying time, and I just ask at home that you would manage your time. Manage your time well, get your homework done, but enjoy uh, being home with your family, and just be careful with the things that are going on. Uh, this is a very tumultuous time, and we know historic moment, and I, I ask actually ask that you would uh, start journaling every day, every other day. Just uh, remember this 10 years, 20 years from now, whenever you look back and just the things that you did day by day. So anyway, uh, many of you hopefully have been, have read your Telescoping the Times, which basically outlined Chapter 22, Vietnam. And what I'm going to attempt to do for you is I'm going to give you uh, a brief lecture, hopefully about 10 minutes, 15 at the most. And then somehow I'm going to upload the PowerPoint that goes along with this just so you can follow along. Um, but we were going to be talking about the war in Vietnam soon. And again, those are the things that you should be looking at now with your telescoping the times. I gave you four images in which to analyze and hopefully do some research on your own. You see, I dressed up today because I just need to get back into some kind of routine and I wanted to, uh, feel like I was at school. I was actually planning on going to school today and, and recording this and doing this. However, uh, in light of events over the weekend and, and um, other folks who have contracted this virus, I just felt it was safe for me, my family, and um, anyone else who may be in contact with to, uh, it might be safer just to stay home. So anyway, so the war of Vietnam, one of the very first things that, uh, I always like to show you is where in the world is the place that we're talking about. Vietnam is a uh, sticks off of peninsula southeast to Asia. It had been controlled over many years, decades, centuries by different powers. We had talked about foreign policy. We had talked about um, imperialism. If you remember, imperialism is a quest for colonial empires. The French had been one of those powers. Um, in the late 1800s who had gone out, colonized several areas, and Southeast Asia, French Indochina, which it will be called later with Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos, those nations, uh, was controlled by the French for many years up until World War II, until the Japanese came through and overran, kicked the French out, basically, and it would be occupied by the Japanese up until 1945, until they surrender. The French will once again come into Southeast Asia, back into French Indochina. The Vietnamese don't want them back. The Vietnamese want to be independent. And this will be the beginnings of the conflict uh, right after World War II, basically, between the Vietnamese and the French. And then later on, the United States will get involved. And that's where we'll talk about our portion of the Vietnam War. So again, Southeast Asia... Uh, the PowerPoint, if you're able to download it, I'm going to upload it hopefully to the site. I don't know how much space will be on there. I'll also email it out and maybe be able to provide a link through LiveGrade. So I'll try several different attempts to do this just to see how this works. Uh, this is something new with many of us, and um, we're working through this together. But I just wanted to provide you some information, um, some background information on Vietnam. So that way maybe you can... Uh, Follow along, read through the PowerPoint, read through some information on the internet, the telescoping, the timesheets that I gave you. So just a little bit of early history again with Vietnam. It's a long, thin peninsula, Southeast Asia, and from basically the late 1800s until World War II, the French had ruled Vietnam. They basically treated the Vietnamese poorly, uh, using them as a resource for income, um, taking out resources for their own benefit, as, as any imperialist nation had done throughout the world, throughout history. Um, there was a, a man, the Communist Party had organized in Vietnam. Ho Chi Minh was one of these leaders that will, will take control. But just, again, some background with this, as Ho Chi Minh had traveled to France in his younger days and, and I believe the 20s or so, and he was educated in France. Again, France, France uh, Vietnam being a 
a colony, if you will, of France. He had traveled there, uh, got a great education in France, but he also began to understand the communist side, and he wanted independence for the Vietnamese. Later on, he'll return to Vietnamese to try to gain independence for his people. In 1941, Japan had conquered, as I said before, Vietnam, um, but the Vietnamese communist Ford formed an organization called the Viet Minh. Uh, the Viet Minh's goal was basically to achieve independence for Vietnam. And again, in 1945, once the Japanese were defeated, uh, the Japanese had to leave Vietnam. Now, the Vietnamese feeling that, hey, uh, you know, the entire world just fought for freedom. France just gained their independence back from Nazi Germany as the United States rolled through France. Uh, the Vietnamese felt, hey, we're going to be in the same boat as them, and we're going to be able to have our independence as well, just like now France is free once again. But that's not going to be the result. The French are going to go back into Southeast Asia. They're going to want to take their resources back and to rebuild what, what they had once before. But it will be uh, futile, basically, and it will be a long, extended fight. Uh, the French will finally be defeated in 54. The United States will slowly get involved. And by 1965, the uh, United States will send its first combat troops into Vietnam. Um, again, Viet, the Viet Minh had claimed independence, just like America had claimed independence from Great Britain, just because you claim independence doesn't mean you are independent and that they recognize it. France wanted to take control. They moved their French troops back into the country by 1946. So the United States, like other Western nations, uh, was trying to stop the spread of communism. We had talked about this before, the policy of containment after World War II, feeling that if we could stop communism um, from spreading, that this would be the most effective way. Uh, once we get to the 1950s and 60s, one of those ideas that comes about is called the domino theory, feeling that if one nation falls to communism, those around it will fall as well. For example, if Vietnam would fall to communism, then Laos, Cambodia, Burma, and those nations that surround it would fall. Again, the domino theory is what this was called. President Eisenhower explained this, and this would be the uh, country's policy moving forward to contain communism once again. Therefore, the United States is going to support the French, even though uh, Ho Chi Minh will quote the Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal. He'll actually send a letter to President Truman at the time asking Truman to support the Vietnamese people in their fight against imperialism, colonization, and asking the United States to support them in their freedom. Uh, Truman will basically crumble up the letter and throw it away because um, of the idea of the Viet Minh being communist, and the United States will support the French, who is our ally. So in 1954, the final blow comes for the French at a place called Dien Bien Phu. Dien Bien Phu. Um, one of the things I think about is Billy Joel's song, We Didn't Start the Fire. Dien Bien Phu Falls, uh, Rock Around the Clock is one of the lines in that. But anyway, it's a French outpost where um, the French thought that they uh, were going to easily defend. However, they're overrun by the Vietnamese. This is a big blow to the United States. We're fearful that now the French will uh, will fall, that Vietnam is going to um, fall to communism, and we'll slowly begin to give support to the Vietnamese, whether it's uh, monetarily, weapons, and so on. Um, there will be some advisors in Vietnam in the early 60s, but it won't be till 1965, really, till uh, there are boots on the ground. So let's fast forward. 1963, Secretary of Defense uh, Robert McNamara had advised Johnson. Johnson is now president after the assassination of Kennedy. It's late 1963. Secretary of Defense, again, Robert McNamara advises um, to increase military commitment. Um, the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, basically what happens here is um, the U.S. Navy claims it's fired on a fired upon by a Vietnamese ship. The United States will in turn respond and Lyndon Johnson will get what's called the, the um, Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, which Congress will pass, which is the use of military force um, to prevent any further aggression by the Vietnamese. Now again, the United States did not declare war. Congress did not pass a declaration of war, um, but both houses will overwhelmingly pass the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, which will really be the first step in the escalation of this war in Vietnam. Um, 
So it's going to be difficult for the United States. It's, it's going to be like no other war that we've fought before. The dense jungles are going to make traditional war nearly impossible. Uh, if, if you look back at the American Revolution, we had a bunch of ragtag farmers, so to speak, fighting against the greatest military nation in the world and the British. And the farmers will win. One, because we know the land. Two, because our hearts are in it. We want independence. Well, the United States doesn't seem to remember this. Almost 200 years later, we get into Vietnam. Um, the Vietnamese are going to be fighting for their homeland. They're going to be fighting for something that they believe in. They're going to be fighting on their home territory in these dense jungles. And they're going to use guerrilla tactics, guerrilla warfare, which is hit and run tactics, small units, because they know that they can't defeat the United States head on. Um, so they're going to use these small tactics. Underground tunnels are going to be um, the virtual winning tactic for the Vietnamese. Um, again, you'll see in the PowerPoint, too, some of the tunnels, pictures of the tunnels and, and how intricate they were. We really won't know how, how great these tunnels were until after the war. So escalation is basically the buildup of forces the United States will um, carry out the draft with the Selective Service and begin this ex escalation in Vietnam. The average U.S. soldier in Vietnam is younger, poorer, and less educated than those in World War II or Korea. Um, you're going to see, uh, you know, people are going to argue this is going to be the rich man's war because the poor man isn't going, to, isn't going to get to stay home. He's going to get drafted and have to go out and fight. And in that case, too, a large percentage of African Americans overwhelmingly are going to serve in this war as well. Um, there's a thing called deferments where... Um, a young man could get a deferment and def be deferred military duty for several things. Um, one is going to college. So you'll see many of these young men who can afford it, they'll attend college so they can get a deferment, which will postpone their military service. Um, African Americans, as I said, and Hispanics will serve in tremendous numbers, and over 10,000 women will serve in this war as well. Not in combat positions, but usually in service uh, uh, medical positions. So letter C in the PowerPoint, which uh, the presentation gets into the air war, Operation Rolling Thunder, which was a bombing campaign against military targets in North Vietnam. Um, one of the things we're going to try to do is use our air power to try to bomb them into submission, um, but the Vietnamese will continue to fight. Down along the backbone of Vietnam, on the border of Cambodia and Laos, uh, the Vietnamese will use what's called the Ho Chi Minh Trail, this intricate series of trails, which they will be able to move men, they'll be able to move materials down into the south, and be able to reinforce the Viet Cong. The Viet Cong are the guerrilla fighters in the south. One of the things that's going to be difficult is it's going to be difficult to understand who's a South Vietnamese soldier, which are fighting on the side of the United States, and a Viet Cong, which is also Vietnamese, but fighting for the North Vietnamese, the NVA, the North Vietnamese Army. Um, so it's going to be hard to tell a difference, and they're going to be able to uh, basically smuggle supplies and troops into South Vietnam um, constantly throughout the remainder of this war. We'll try to defend this. We'll try to bomb out the trail. However, once we do, they immediately repair it and begin to uh, send troops back in. Um, these repeated increase, increased bombings fail to produce the results that we need. The United States, because of such cover, the United States will use napalm, which is basically a gelled form of gasoline, which when it hits, it explodes and just tries to take out large portions of either enemy or um, um, areas of the jungle. We'll also use a defoliant, which removes the leaves and strips the jungle. It's called Agent Orange. Um, and basically this chemical will be dropped on the jungle to strip it so we can see the enemy from the air. Later on, this is going to cause problems for American forces with cancer and those kinds of things. So the ground war. Again, this is going to be unlike any war ever fought. The Vietnamese and the Viet Cong use uh, ground tactics. They use guerrilla warfare, which are basically um, hit and run tactics. So the United States will try to change our tactic because we'll go out on what's called search and destroy missions. Go out and search for the enemy and pull back um, once we locate them and then we'll call in air support to try to destruct 
the enemy. Again, it's going to be difficult to find the enemy because in the middle of the day in South Vietnam, you have all of these farmers out farming their rice paddies, rice fields, and so on. And we think that they're South Vietnamese. However, at night, they take up weapons, and really they're Viet Cong fighting against the United States. So it's going to be a very difficult uh, mission for, for the U.S. The U.S. Uh, troops try to pacify, or what's called pacification, and we'll go in and we'll, we'll move residents out of villages. We'll burn the villages because we feel that the Viet Cong is using these for supplies. They'll use them for food and so on, hide weapons, which in most cases they are. However, it alienates the people who may be uh, helping the United States because we're going to move them from their villages. So lots of alienation is going on as well. One of the things that this is going to be different than any other war as well is the fact that it's going to be a televised war. People will sit down to dinner in the evenings back home in the United States and literally watch this war on TV. So high optimism among the troops at first, at the beginning of this war, we feel we're going to go in and just decimate these, these um, Vietnamese, the farmers that, that have these rudimentary weapons and so on. But um, as the war goes on and the, 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 news predicts and shows the numbers of troops that are dead and wounded every night. This is going to take a toll on the American public. Some Americans um, demand that we do what it takes to win. However, uh, the United States is supporting an unpopular regime and Ngo Dinh Diem, who is the South Vietnamese leader, he's very ruthless to his people. Um, and some people do not like what he's doing, even the Vietnamese people. Um, you're go there's going to be images of Buddhist monks burning themselves literally in protest against the Diem regime in South Vietnam. Um, and this doesn't do anything to help the U.S. cause there either. The hawks, again, we've talked about this before, hawks support the war and doves are those who are against the war effort. So that's basically section one of that in a nutshell. I'm not going to go on too much further with this video. Again, I'm trying to get my feet wet with this and see how you kids react. I will upload this video to YouTube and create a link for it, and I will also upload the PowerPoint to go along with it, so you can follow along, print it off if you need it, use it for any references for your document analysis rubrics or worksheets. So remember to uh, analyze your four images from the Vietnam era, which is a two of soldiers and there are two of protests, so choose any one you want, analyze the document, write the 200 word response. Um, using this information, using your telescoping the times, um, Google it, look for information to support your, your topics. Also, make a connection. I think it's number question number 13. Are there any connections between the past and today? Um, you know, Americans want things over and they want it quickly. Just like we'll see with this event that's occurring um, today, that, that it, it's going to be interesting as it unfolds and how America is going to react. So, again, as, as Vietnam continues to wear on, it will actually wear on the American people and they'll, they'll want out of this war. And we'll see that when we get to 1967-68 um, when um, I'll give you another lecture, hopefully, on that. So be well, take care of one another, check on your elderly grandparents or maybe an elder, elderly neighbor, and um, just be safe during this time. So I miss you all, and hopefully um, we'll be back together soon. So until I post another video, have a good day.